What's up, guys? Welcome to the first episode of 2024, starting the new year off right, uh, for some definition of right. <laughs> I was going to go outside and do some landscape stuff uh, because it snowed last night, and I was very excited this morning when I woke up. But uh, now it's raining, and it's like 39 degrees, and it's like 40 mile an hour winds. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to wait. In the meantime, though, I thought I'd start off with a little q and I've been getting a lot of questions about this lately, especially with upcoming cameras and whatnot. And I know a lot of people got Christmas money, a lot of people got tax money coming up, uh, whatever. If you've been saving all year and you're just ready for it, what are the best cameras, Canon cameras in 2024 for wildlife photography? So obviously there's not like one right answer, right? Like I can't just say this here, this is the best camera period for everything you know, it just, it doesn't work that way. Everybody's different. We all have different budgets and needs and, you know, wants and all of that. So I'm just going to break it down into what I think is like the best for different scenarios, price points, all of that kind of stuff. Having said all of that though, I will say there is actually one camera that I think is overall the best. And that is taking into consideration features versus price versus uh, all, all of that stuff. So kind of overriding everything I just said, <laughs> I think the best camera right now going into 2024 for overall is, it should be no shock to you guys if you already know my channel, is the R6 Mark II. That's the camera I'm currently filming with right now. Otherwise, I'd show it to you. <laughs> uh, but I think overall, all things considered, the R6 Mark II is the best. It has, and that's not to say that it's perfect because it's not. Um, for wildlife photography, obviously the biggest drawback is we want more megapixels. It has 24 megapixels. So many people complain that it's not enough. And I think most of the people who complain don't actually use that um, or haven't actually used it in particular. Um, but I'm a doer, not a complainer. And personally, I have no issues with the 24 megapixels on the R6 Mark II. You can live with 24 megapixels. I promise you'll survive. And I promise you can still crop in. I still, when I do use the R6 Mark II for wildlife and I need to crop, I can still crop in a solid 50%. And my rule of thumb for me personally is I go for, uh, I don't crop in, I try not to crop in more than, uh, 2160 on the long end and that's pixels so that that'll give me a full 100 percent display on a 4k monitor and doing that shooting the r6 mark ii putting it in crop mode even even putting the r6 mark ii in crop mode i can still crop in a little bit more like 20 to 30 percent more and still have enough pixels for 2160 on the long end and that for me personally, maybe that's not enough for you. Maybe you're just like way more ridiculous in your needs for megapixels than I am. But for me, none of my clients have ever complained. No one has ever noticed on Instagram or my website or YouTube. I've had zero issues with it. So I just want to get that out of the way first. Uh, megapixels aside, because there are some other cameras that we're going to take a look at that don't have high megapixels. Well, in the Canon world, nothing has high megapixels for the mirrorless except for the R5. But that's my first off advice for anybody who is looking to upgrade. If you don't already have an R5, then the R6 Mark II, I think, is the overall best there is. It's got the same autofocus as the R3, which is amazing. I much prefer the R6 Mark II's autofocus to my R5. It's so much better than my R5. I also much prefer most of the video features, you know, the no record limit, all of that stuff. That's important to me as a YouTuber and as also a videographer, you know, who, who does commercial videography work. It, probably not important to you for you or wildlife. Low light capability of the R6 Mark II is incredible. It's just, it's the best there is in my opinion for the Canon stuff. I absolutely love it. So if I know I'm going out before, you know, before uh, sunrise or whatever, and if I know it's just really dark outside or it's just yucky or whatever, maybe I'll grab the R6 Mark II and know that, you know, I'm not going to have any issues with high ISOs. I don't generally have hit issues with high ISOs anymore anyways with any of the cameras I shoot. The R5 does great. Um, even the R7, a lot of people complain about it, you know, with the high ISO. And yeah, it doesn't do nearly as good as the full frames but it does well enough. I've shot plenty of 10,000, 12,800, 6,400 with the R7. 
And because of the Adobe's new AI noise reduction, which comes free with you know Lightroom and Photoshop, it's just incredible. So I'm not gonna personally be complaining about that either for anything that we're looking at. The other thing that, that leads me to the R6 Mark II being the best overall, again, is price. Uh, it is still relatively expensive. Price, again, is a relative thing. It depends on your lifestyle, your budget, your needs, all of that. But for now, it's still a fair chunk of change less than an R5, which again, puts that value a lot higher up in my book if you think you can live without the high megapixels. So naturally, I guess let's just start about the R5 next. Um, clearly, I still love the R5. It's still my main camera, but I also do a lot of landscape, uh, sports, commercial. I, I do everything, you know, and the R5 is kind of the best overall camera for that price aside, you know, and, and I, I say that knowing that it is expensive, uh, but it's the best jack of all trades. You know, if you could only have one and you can afford it, the R5 is still my jam in 2024. It's still something that I'm going to be using all year. Hopefully, if and when the R5 Mark II comes out, I will be able to get one. I've been saving, uh, and I'm, but I actually probably will sell the R5 to make up for that if I can. That being said, there's still some features on the R5 in 2024 that have not been replaced or upgraded or beaten, I should say, by any of the newer models. Um, and I've talked about this a lot in other videos, but having the multifunction button that's over there by the trigger, having that button be able to set to switch to video for me to do custom videos uh, means that I can have my video access with one click while I'm shooting on the right hand and I can change from stills to video super fast. And as a hybrid shooter and a YouTuber, when I'm doing videos for you guys, that's like the most important thing to me. And none of the other, the R6 Mark II can't do that. It has a nice video switch to switch from stills to video, but they put it on the wrong side. And when you're holding a big lens like this, you can't afford to take your hand off the lens and then switch it and then go back. And you can't, and it's hard to, you know, do this business and it's just, you know, the R5 just can't be beat for the setup, in my opinion, for how I shoot. And then of course there's the megapixels. Um, I say that you can live with 24 megapixels and you can, and I do, but I still love my 45 megapixels. So there is that. And then of course, 8K video, again, for me, uh, maybe it's not important to you, but shooting wildlife in 8K is actually really great because then that gives me croppability in a 4K timeline. So that means that I can just get closer and have better video without getting closer, you know, and still have room to pan or zoom or or just punch in, you know, and I, I really appreciate that. So on the R5, I have the record button when I'm in stills, I have the record button set to 8K in my C3. That way, if I'm in stills and I just hit the record button, it just immediately starts recording in 8K. And then it, whatever the wildlife is doing, I can punch in, get that extra reach if I need it. And then I have the multifunction button set for if I want to switch to 4K60 or 4K 120, I can easily do that with one click of another button and bam, there it is. So functionality, still love me the R5. And that's all possible because they put the electronic uh, mode instead of the mode dial, instead of the tourney mode dial, which I much prefer the electronic mode dial. Like I mentioned to the R5's autofocus, these did when it came out, it was amazing. The R6, the R5 came out at the same time. Um, they were amazing. They're better than, I still, they're better than any DSLR I've ever had, you know, and I had all the good DSLRs. I would never personally go back to a DSLR. That's just my opinion. That's just my preference. Uh, but the AF is really good and it's no slouch. But after having used an R6 Mark II, it, I do realize the struggles and I do see the differences very plainly uh, and a lot when, you know, using the R5 and certain cases where it struggles that the R6 too just doesn't. That being said, because of the megapixels, I think I usually go for the R5 and you probably would be the same if you had that same choice. The other great thing about the R5 is it's getting long in the tooth and it is rumored to be replaced soon. So hopefully Q1, Q2 will at least hear an, an official announcement. I don't know, you know, I know as much as anybody else does. 
fingers crossed. But you know, the good thing about that for the R5 is it is the price is going to go down. You know, it may not go down a lot, but it will go down a little bit. And when you're seeing used R5s on the market, um, it's just it's going to be a lot easier, I think, for a lot of people to pick it up, and it's going to be much more worth it, even at the sacrifice of it being a little long in the tooth. You know, with the the not as good AF anymore, the aging AF, and the you know the Canon still refuses to take out the video record time limit in the R5, which is another thing that just drove me bonkers. I'm still considering an R5C for the YouTube stuff, but that doesn't have anything to do with wildlife, so we're not going to talk about that. The R5 could be poised for 2024, especially in the latter half of 2024, to be an even better for your budget camera to consider. And if this is another thing I get asked a lot, and I honestly, I just don't know the answer. Like, it's too hard to choose. It, it's really going to depend on you. But a lot of people asking me, like, if the R5 price goes down enough to compete or be similar to an R6 Mark II, which would I get? If you could only get one, it, I think it just comes down to video. And I think it comes down to, are you going to be printing on the side of billboards? I can easily print massive images with 24 megapixels. Like it's not a problem. But if you know that you're going to constantly be cropping to 100% plus all the time, then you might just want to get the R5, even at the sacrifice of the autofocus not being quite as good. But that would definitely make it more interesting for best Canon camera for wildlife, in my opinion, is if the R5 price drops enough for it to be competitive with an R6 Mark II. What are you going to do in that position? I don't know. All right, so those are the big boys. Those are out of the way. I'm not going to talk about the R3 because I just think it's out of 99.9% .9 of people's reach, you know, and it's still like 5,000 plus or whatever. Uh, even if it drops down to 4,500 or something with an R1 coming out, that's still another thousand dollars more than an R5 Mark II is going to be. So it just, the R3 is amazing. It's bigger, it's heavier though. So you got to keep that in mind. But I'm really just going to kind of gloss over that because the R6 Mark II is the poor man's R3 and it's just absolutely incredible. All right, next best contender obviously uh, is the R7. And I think if you are not new to the channel, then you know how I feel about the R7. I've made a few videos with it. I owned it for at least six months, I think, maybe longer. I don't know, but I did sell it this year. I sold it most, I would have liked to keep it. I sold it mostly because I needed the money for other things, um, mainly, you know, things like that giant 500 F4 back there. Um, I've made videos about all that stuff. The point is, if I could have afforded to keep it, I would have, especially now being down a camera, um, and having gotten the RF 100 to 400 recently as my favorite travel and wildlife landscape everything lens, um, I would love to have that paired with an R7. Having the RF 1 to 400 paired with the R7, giving me 640 millimeters of reach uh, in a super light, travel friendly, just ridiculously small package is something that's been on my bucket list for a long time. And I have the 1 to 400 now, and I'm super stoked, and I just can keep it on the R6 Mark II while I have the R5 and the 500. And that's still a light enough of a package that, and small enough that I don't notice it and I can keep it in the bag if I need both. But I am looking to potentially get an R7 again, even with all of the stuff that I said about it. So let's talk about the R7. Um, you know, if you wanna watch my full video, the long-term review, you can check that out. But basically for me, it came down to the autofocus. It, it's very, it's better than the R5 in acquisition, but it's worse than the R5 and the R6 Mark II and the R6 and the R8. It's worse than all of them for keeping hold of it. Like it'll acquire it faster and it does a great job, but it just bounces off too much for me as a professional. You, you know, I, I have to be able to rely on that more than, than I can after having used it for six months, it just, it wasn't up to my standards for what I want out of a camera. Now, if you're not a professional and you, you know, you don't have like a lot of weight on your shoulders in terms of like what's expected out of you, then I still think the R7 is definitely budget friendly, the best camera there is. 
Uh, and I say that for wildlife, but I also say that for everything else because for everything else, it's great. You know, for landscapes, it's great. For portraits, it's great. For uh, for Astro, it's decent. You know, uh, you can do all of that stuff with the R7. If that's going to be your one camera, it's a great all around one camera and you can't beat that price. You can get a used one on MPB for like, you know, 1200 bucks or something like you can't beat that. You know, it's, it's amazing for all in one, but for wildlife specifically, you get the crop factor, which is nice for the reach. Uh, but you, you do sacrifice a little in the ISO, but after using it for, you know, six months or whatever I did, you can watch the videos that I've done on it. The ISO was not something I ever really complained about again, because nowadays with the AI denoising, it's just too good. It's just too easy to fix that and to clean it up. So for me personally, the ISO wasn't an issue. It was the autofocus. The next big issue is the rolling shutter. It's horrible. It's the worst I've seen period. It's the worst I've ever used. The rolling shutter is bad and it's, uh, it's way worse in, uh, electronic. But unfortunately, so is the shutter shock, the sound and the, the, from the shutter slapping when you're in mechanical mode, is just absolutely the worst. So not only does that like shake your camera when it, when it does that, but it's actually like one of the loudest noises I've heard come out of a shutter from any Canon camera. And that goes against being discreet in wildlife situations. Most of the time, <laughs> you know, if I'm at Bosque or something and I'm shooting the blast off or, you know, a bunch of cranes on the side of the road or whatever, like then the sound of the shutter doesn't matter. If you're in a place where birds are tame, you know, like at your local park or something, maybe that doesn't matter. But if you're out trying to do like real wildlife in, in real scenarios, and if you're in a hide or a blind, or if you're just being super quiet, walking through the woods, the R7 mechanical shutter, you don't want that. Trust me. Like I'll take the rolling shutter over that sound any day. The other downside to the R7 for me, again, because this is only because I already have an R5 and an R6 Mark II is the form factor. Uh, it's just not as great. We're missing a thumb wheel on the, on the back. They didn't give us the third wheel. And just the whole layout is just a little bit different. It's just different enough to where it causes muscle memory problems. It's not a huge deal. It's not a deal breaker for me. It's just something that you have to get used to because it's a smaller form factor. But looking back on it now that I'm missing a third camera, and now that I want a travel size camera, I'm really considering the R7 again, uh, despite my frustrations with it because of its form factor. So for me, uh, doing wildlife and having a backup camera and doing travel photography and landscape and stuff, my second camera of choice comes down to either an R7 or an R8. And an R8 is the poor man's R6 Mark II because it's got the same sensor and it's got the same autofocus and it's amazing, uh, but it's missing IBIS and it has a smaller battery. And those two things right there are what's drawing me back to the R7 is that it does have IBIS and it does have the same battery as my R6 II and my R5. And to me, that's really important. Uh, having the bigger battery life is good. Having IBIS is great, but I'm also still seriously considering the R8 just for its size and its weight. I had the RP for a long time and I absolutely loved it. And I would still have it today if I hadn't given it to my stepdad uh, for something like his birthday or something last year. I would probably still have that. Uh, I, I love the form factor of it. And you can't, an R8 or an R7 with the R, RF 100 or 400 is like the smallest, lightest, best package you can get in the Canon world, in my opinion. So that's my thoughts on the R7. I still recommend it. I really do, uh, especially if you've never had, if it's an upgrade from anything you've ever had, if you're coming from a DSLR, if, you're, if it's gonna be an upgrade, then I definitely recommend it. If, if you already have an R5 or an R6 Mark II, I would only recommend it if you really just want a backup or you want an extra body for the reach. So we'll just jump into the R8 uh, real quick. We've already mentioned, you know, it has the same sensor as the R6 II, which I love. It's the best that Canon has right now. It's got the best autofocus, which is great, but it does have the smallest battery. So it is gonna move that autofocus a little bit slower. Probably not slow enough for anybody to notice, but if you're comparing it to like an R3, uh, then obviously you'll probably notice. But if you can live without IBIS and if you can live with a smaller battery and you're on a budget and you want or need a full frame camera, the R8 is the way to go. It's just incredible. Those are my top. There are more, 
Um, I think I would go with these over anything else unless just budget will not let you get anything else than get an R10. You know, um, the R10 has the same autofocus as the R7, so it's gonna have the same problems. It is lower megapixel too, but you are getting that crop factor. And I don't know the numbers for the sensor readout, but I imagine that the R10 is still gonna be just as bad for rolling shutter as the R7, even though it has less megapixels. But the further down you go towards the budget, you know, the, the more features you're losing. So, you know, just take that in consideration. But those are my best, you know, the best all around for everything is price included is the R6 Mark II. Right now, the best overall thing, if price is an option right now, is the R5. The best budget-friendly wildlife, uh, if you don't need full frame, is the R7. As long as you can live with and understand those uh, drawbacks that it has. And I put that on a tie with the R8 because the R8 will give you full frame. It will give you the best autofocus, uh, but you'll be losing IBIS in the battery. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna go check on the weather and see if the wind has calmed down. If it has, I think I'm gonna try to go out this evening and maybe do some landscape or some wildlife stuff. I was hoping to get some cactus wrens in the snow on the cactus. Maybe I'm gonna make that an episode if the snow sticks around. You know, this is New Mexico, so uh, this is Southern New Mexico, not just Northern New Mexico, the snow will stick around down here. Uh, it doesn't stay around too, too long. So as long as the wind can calm down enough that my mic can work, <laughs> then I'm gonna try to make another video for you guys here pretty soon. But let me know what you think. Uh, what are you looking forward to in 2024? Are you, are you planning on upgrading? You know, what are your thoughts? What do, you, what do you got? What are you looking for? You know, I love talking in the comments down below. So hit me up. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. I really appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button if you made it this far and you haven't already, you should. Uh, most of my stuff's outside anyway, so you probably love it. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.